How is everyone doing? Oh my goodness, Grandpa. Woo! Uh, he doesn't like to unload through the through the draws. So I'm gonna take her nice and easy. Right down in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose I might. This is like my third attempt at making a video of this harvest. I'm just gonna do it today. Uh, the other ones were about three clips, and I said, nah, I don't wanna do that. But I don't know. I just, it, I think it'd be fun. I don't know. I'm filming in 4K on my iPhone at 60 frames a second. It's an iPhone 14 Pro Max. Great phone, great phone. One of the best, one of the best phones. I love how I can change my, ah, uh, no, it won't go, won't do it. My lens, but I guess not today. Now we're on a hillside, so I'm really just dropping the corn into the Kinsey. Just raining it down. How fun. Yep, I can hear you. Okay, I set the engine off and started. So that's good. Okay. Grandpa's been having trouble with this radio, and he... Yeah, we had problems with that radio last year, too, and it's, uh... There must be a relay that is not working. There's a wire somewhere in like the ignition power section of the radio that isn't making super great connections. So it uh, doesn't always make good contact. We don't always have power to that radio. So we are picking corn. Uh, there's the place. There's the home quarter around it, which I've iterated many, many times, but I farm that. And then there's this Hilly 80 that my dad bought when he was, oh, I don't know, 24 or five, I think, back when the land was a pretty good price. And then just east of this is a level 80 that we also farm, but we rent that farm. Um, so we farm it as one quarter though. And dad had a pivot on this hilly 80 and he built a bridge up the dam, which I'm sure we'll get to, um, that that pivot walks up. So yeah, we farm this whole thing as just one big quarter, which is really nice. Cause then we've got this half section and there's the other half of the section over there, which we don't have any of, but it's really nice. And I don't know, there's a draw. Whoa, ow, whoa, wow. Uh, when I say half section, half section is two quarters. It's about 320 acres, give or take. Um, but obviously on the home quarter, we have the place. So that takes, oh, I don't know. I don't even know how many, like the whole thing is like, 13, I think, maybe a little less, maybe 10 to 15. Right? Yeah, it has got slowed up a little. Uh, the stocks look different on the impact. Well, yeah, something's worn out. Okay, well, it must be the stocks are different then. So, okay. I don't know. I've struggled on this farm to keep it, to keep it clear. I mean, that's not bad if you actually uh, against the window I always I never base it off the window sample because the window sample doesn't look very good but if you actually climb up and look um, it's really clean I'll show you the settings I'm running at the moment so there we go rotor speeds 320 concave 26 wind is 1250 18 on the chaffer 13 on the sieve you know on my on my sieve settings I bounce back and forth I'm not getting a lot through the return um, at 13, but I'm getting it pretty clean. I like to leave my chaffer open because I run my wind so high in corn. I want it to drop through. And sometimes, I don't know, every situation is different, but with this farm, you know, it's irrigated commercial corn. It's 18 to 20% moisture. Kernel size is pretty big, but it is heavy corn. So I'd probably be okay tightening up my chaffer just a little bit to make it a little cleaner and I can turn my wind up a little more, which I tried yesterday but I was blowing a lot out the back, so I turned my wind down a little bit, and then my my setting, or my, my sample looked the same. It was still the same amount of dirty um, as it is right now, but I was still blowing it out the back with my chaffer closed up, so I opened it up. Um, yeah, I don't know. This, is, this, this farm has been the most I've battled setting the machine, for sure. But I, 
got it set pretty good. That's what an operator does. We set the machine ourselves. It's kind of funny. We've got them written down in the manuals that are back there behind the seat. They're back there somewhere. They're hidden. They're back there. Um, but I don't really go off those settings at all. I mean, it's a good base beginning point, uh, like a good flat line. Set them here if you don't know any better. But I always just set them there, and then I adjust, you know, through the field until I get something that I'm happy with. And I will say also, I've gotten a lot better at setting the machine this year. Last year, truth be told, I didn't really have a single clue what I was doing, um, but this year I do. Unloading on the going hills is so fun. Just leaned all the way back, and it won't focus because all the dust on the window. And Grandpa's running away from me. Oh my goodness. These Kinsey carts, ah, carts. These Kinsey carts are really tall, so they can be sort of challenging to work with. See if we'll have enough to make it. I think we will. All right, you can go with that. So if you've ever wondered what 270 bushel corn looks like coming into the tank, it just billows in, dude. I mean, it just flies. It just piles right in. Uh, part of me kind of missed the YouTube situation. I mean, it's a lot of work, but then again, it's only a lot of work if you make it a lot of work. See, and I'm not going to try that hard. That's the thing. I'm not going to I'm not gonna go out and like make cool edits and stuff. I don't have time for that. But I do like to, to talk. That's the thing. I like to talk. Um, I don't know. I've got enough friends that farm on YouTube, you know, why not, why not give YouTube an actually funny one, I don't know, just a thought, alright, let's whip this old girl around, like nobody's business, yeah, oh, come on, ah, ah, one moment, let's see if I can do this one handed, I don't really know, it's going to be challenging, 12 row head, you count over six rows and go, son. One of the four, five, six. Ah! All right, let's go crank left hard, mash that brake, drop. Let the, the wheels turn for me, and we are good to go. Yeah, it's an irrigated quarter, but on these hills, it's just kind of. The water can get kind of inconsistent uh, for obvious reasons. It runs through the hills, you know, it runs down into the bottoms. And so, yeah, those bottoms, I mean, we'll have a lot of 20% spots. You can see some is picked over there. We uh, we picked the corner already. Picked the corners on this farm. So, well, that doesn't look right now. What in the world? Big deals, big deals. I don't want to bore you guys, but this is what it is. All, all day long running the combine. Man, I get real tensed up. Oh, Grandpa. This is the one problem with those row car, cr or row crop carts. Um, they like to slide in the hills. Up, up, up. The sliding is definitely less than ideal, I will say. And I know I've, uh, I really, this is the first year I've really ran a combine through these hills. Um, I did last year, but I didn't do it for all of them. And I don't remember why, but running a cart in these hills can really make you suck the seat up a certain part of your body. Um, yeah, it can make you nervous. Especially because some of these draws, as you go through them, you're already on a side hill, so when that cart tips into the side hill, I mean, you'll have, oh, what was it? Last year, two years ago, I had a I was going through the draw and I was really, really full in that uh, dual row crop cart. And I had one tire come off the ground. So I was looking back because I did it because I was so terrified going through it. But I had to go through it because we were loading on the go. So I wasn't going slow, I was going like three mile an hour. And yeah, I had a, I had a tire come off the ground. That was pretty, pretty frightening. Yeah, dude, I mean, if I keep at this YouTube thing a little bit, um, you know, next year is going to be really fun. It's going to be a blast. And I also kind of want to do the YouTube thing because it sort of documents the seasons for us. You know, as we go through the season, 
you know, you can look back at the YouTube videos and be like, oh, I forgot that that broke. I forgot how much of a headache that was. We were so annoyed in the moment. And now look, it didn't matter at all. So I want to I wanna be able to look back. And especially, you know, these seasons with Dad, I'm, I want to cherish these. His dad, he's retiring in like seven years when my little brother graduates high school. So I want to be able to cherish these moments with my father. But all right. Uh, I like to talk as I previously stated. If I keep talking, I'm going to have way too long of a video on my hands with not that many interesting things. So I'm going to stop YouTubing for a little bit. Oh, and I'm full. Well... Dude, that's my third cab corn. Third cab corn of the year. Oh my goodness. And I know I know it's because I'm not actually full, but I'm on a downhill. That's why I got cab corn. Damn it! Ah, it's so frustrating. Last year I had cab corn multiple times every commercial cornfield we did. This year that is only my third time. And it's just due to poor circumstance. Let's get out, take a peek. And I want to see what kind of job the combine's doing. So I guess I'm not done YouTubing for a little bit. Um but we only have one cart running right now because my sister is getting married in like two days and my dad had to go to Lincoln to help get some stuff set up um, and he had to get his beard trimmed so he won't be here till about 11 so we're just running the one cart for right now and that means a little more sit time for the combine. This is actually our ninth season with this S670. Um, have we made a change? Have we not? I don't know. I guess we might find out. Oh, I need to trim the face that is so bad not that it's good to begin with but it doesn't look terrible if i keep it short let's just see 1829 separator hours 26 38 engine hours wow barely any cow corn but she's she's sloshed forward a good amount i've had cab corn literally like a heaping pile of it before so this i'll take this it's never good when it starts raining though never ever <laughs> So we'll walk back to where it's not all piled up, try to stay sort of towards the middle of the machine. Maybe a couple rows out, see how much it's throwing. Okay, there's a kernel. Um, there, I mean, there's one right there. There's one there and there, but this one's cracked. I don't know. See, and I fought with this. It's a struggle to keep it clean in the tank and keep it in the machine. I mean, three kernels isn't bad, and it's hard to say if that's from. We're on a downhill. Ah! We're on a downhill. And grain separating works a little bit differently in hills. Because um, when you're going down, it's obviously, it's got to work a lot harder to get that grain threshed out and separated well as opposed to on level ground and on uphills you're gonna throw some out the out the back it's gonna shake over the shoe a lot more than it would just on level ground but oh man i don't know three kernels in a square foot it's about three bushel loss an acre probably hey eh? oh well i don't know it's hard to say if that's from the head or the machine um, we can see how much we're getting from the head though. I like filming with this uh, half angle, the wide angle lens. Sort of fish eye, but I get more of it. I don't have to work as hard. I, I like that. Okay, so we'll just go to like right here. Oh, I just saw one. I just saw another somewhere. I know I did. Yeah, and another. So most of that's head loss, I would guess. Yeah, then if we go here. Yeah, there's one. There's another one. There's another one. So yeah, there's three in the square foot, so I don't think I'm losing any out of the back hardly. It's just all from the head. I could squeeze up my deck plates a little more. I have my head running in speed three um just because these are irrigated stocks i really want to rip them down and get them get them handled you know i don't like 
I don't like it when there's a bunch of stocks sticking up in the field that are three foot tall. As long as I get the ear off of them, I don't care that much, but I still want to try and keep it nice out here, you know? <sighs> I'm so ready to sit in the VT. That'll be a fun video to make. I'm excited to make a tillage video, but while I've got some time, I suppose, I'll try to do something productive with it. I wiped these down last night. I washed my windows really good yesterday, but you know, dust just sticks to them. Um, so I'm gonna wipe these down just to kind of keep this somewhat cleanish. Same with my mirror. The other windows are fine. I'll, I'll live with the other windows, but that's a hack, dude. Uh, clean your windows really, really good with glass cleaner. Like take a good amount of time to clean your windows really well and then wipe them down um, after that. If you keep your windows wiped down before the dew sets into them, that's how you keep clean windows. And that is a fact. Just as well wipe down the inside too, why not? I don't really care. This is so interesting, isn't it? What are you gonna do with all this entertainment? Man, look how clean that is. That is beautiful. Back in the office. So we take our shoes off. I like to keep my cab clean. I really, I'm a big keep the cab clean kind of guy. Um, I don't know. And even then, it's still, it could be a lot cleaner than it is, but there's gotta be a point. I don't, I just don't have time to get it perfect all the time. Another reason windows get so dirty is because I, see it, why is it let me switch to half mid video? That's annoying. Yeah. Grandpa! Grandpa! He's in route. Now I'm just playing with it. Dude, you can really zoom in with this phone. Wow. 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 This camera quality is too good. Shows off my unibrow that I keep forgetting to shave. And like, I get hairs that grow all the way up on my cheek. What in the world am my blackheads? Stop looking. It's not good when the combine stops, and I think, and I have more to talk about. I don't know. Next week's gonna be a big week for us. Uh, our hired guy farms an 80. That'll be the last thing we have to harvest. Um, that's all getting hauled straight to town, so it'll be a more slow going process than this quarter, because this quarter, our place is right there with all the bins, as you can see. And uh, so it's not a very long journey for the semis. Um, we can kind of keep keep moving along. Oh, I have some, I have like a, a thousand bushels of Milo I need to sell. So that's something I could do. I could call my, my girl, my girl at CBA. Say, hey, got some grain for you. She'll say, oh, great. Ah, no, next week then we gotta, I, I gotta finish up my finance stuff. I gotta catch up to right now on my QuickBooks. Set up a meeting with the accountant and then I gotta get things ready for next year, get a cash flow. And I might be buying something pretty cool if that works out fairly well. And no, it's not just another toy. It's actually something agriculture related. Um, but I'm not gonna spoil anything until it's actually here sitting in our shop because if I say anything about it on the internet until that actually happens, uh, it won't happen. I will jinx that situation. I just had cab corn run over. And I'm not moving. What? Farming! We're farming. That's what we're doing right now. It's about time to eat my lunch. You know, how can I make this thing default to film in 4K? Because I don't, I don't want to have to switch every time. I don't remember to do that. Then there's action mode. I don't really know what this does. I assume it takes in the action a lot better. Probably a faster, yeah, definitely a faster frame rate. Cool. Dude, I get so many questions about like pivots and what we do during like harvest season and you know, how we work around them and stuff. And I don't know, like, to me it's a dumb question because I've worked around pivots my entire life in machines, you know. I don't know, dude, you got your pivot point? and you just kind of pick around your pivot point without hitting it, obviously, and then, 
uh, you pick one side of it, whatever side the pivot's not on, and you uh, start working on that side, you just walk the pivot into the stuff that's already done. That's all there is to it. I don't know, I've never viewed it as that serious, but some people were like, oh, that'd be so annoying to work around. It's really not, dude. I mean, it's not that bad. It's a lot worse things, you know? Like, we farm big square fields and have to work around one little pivot point in the middle. That's better than farming like Missouri fields, some of them. You ever seen those? They're all shaped every which way. We might pack this one down a little, little tight. Got a case of zoomies. My goodness. He's steering around this washout. Said he goes through it. Oh, I guess he. Well, he didn't really miss it, I guess. See how this goes. This will be kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, it just drops right in. Oh. The tire didn't come off the ground, but it sure got close. It's all too much. He made it through, though. We're good. I knew I should have taken a gun in the combine with me. Look at that right there. There's a coyote right there. Just prancing through the field. Oh my goodness. That's a dark dog too. I don't know if I've ever seen a coyote that that's that, uh, that's that dark. Last year there was a guy, oh he was within 40 minutes of my farm and he shot and killed a wolf that was on his property. So, Hopefully they're not starting to make their way to me because I don't uh, I don't know about all that noise. Well, I finished the hilly side of the 80. Now we're on the level stuff. It's doing very well so far. Uh, yeah. I quite literally, I could fall asleep right now. I won't, but I sure could. Yep. It's It's been a long season. Probably hope I went to bed a little earlier than I do, but I don't know. I'm still tired. I uh, almost got stuck through this little waterway in the uh, oh what was it? Liquid machine, but you can't see the tracks. Or you kind of can over there, I guess. I didn't get stuck, but man, did I make a mess? Yeah, I did. Down. That's the sound of a cornhead. If you're ever, you know, curious, if you're wondering, that's what they sound like. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna process, wait for it to process, and it all starts billowing in. So fun, isn't it? So fun! So this is the first pass through opening up a new block and I won't be able to make it all the way through. So I'm gonna have to, quote, pick over. And we're gonna do that together. That's gonna be a fun little, a fun little experience for us. I gotta get my, try and get my Joby set up to actually show the process of it. Look at that, look at that. Right on top of the radio. Just the way the Lord intended. So my windows are starting to pile. So let's begin the cutting over process. All right, I don't know how well this is gonna work, but we're sure gonna try it. So my grandpa, he likes to not really give me enough space to back up. He, he, you see, he's still driving forward, yeah. He, he, he's right behind me opening up a new pass every time, and he knows, I mean, he knows how I'm gonna do it. I like to give the carts a lot of space so it's not super tight. So I've gone back, oh, I don't know, maybe 100 feet now, not quite. I'm gonna go full left on my turn. I am gonna push over a little more. I'm gonna drop it. And now I'm just gonna hold this angle. I'm gonna sort of steer straight into it. There we go. So I'm gonna hold this. Watch my screen. I know when I should stop to make it come out even on the other path. About right here. So. so that's the first notch. Some people call it notching over. 
all means the same thing. So I'm gonna crank it like this. I like doing it this way instead of trying to steer in after I've sliced over. But some guys don't do two steps. Some guys just turn in as, as they're picking, which can work, but usually it's not the most ideal. So yeah, I didn't really go sharp enough on that. See, this is a, it's a lot of trial and error, just trying to do it the best you can. Corn isn't made to be picked sideways, so when you do have to pick sideways, it doesn't do a very good job. So there I am into my rows. Still not completely straight, but straight enough. I'm not pushing it over. I'm not going to pick up quite a ways. I usually go about, oh, I don't know, 80 feet or so. Maybe more. I, don't, I just go until I feel like I should stop. You might be wondering, why didn't you wait till your tank was more full than all this? Well, I need to have enough room in my tank to be able to do what I'm doing right now. So, there I've picked up quite a ways. Now I'm going to back out, watch my mirrors to keep my wheels between the rows. And watch where the corn ends so that I can jolt out of here. So now my head is there. I'm going to turn hard right out. And I still ran some corn over. That's alright. It'll still harvest. And I back out. I'm pretty sure I've almost slammed into Grandpa backing out. Mission. So yeah, that's really all there is to it. It took me three and a half minutes to do that. And I'm back on my original pass. Oh. Back on my original pass. <sighs> Northern chill. That's some good water. all it is. All right, I don't really need to be filming right now. You guys sort of get the point. So now we're rolling through. I don't know. I'm not really sure what my grandpa's doing. I'm being honest with you. Uh, I've told him three and a half is what we want to unload at on this level stuff. And uh, we're, we're, we're going four and a half right now. So I don't I think he's lost. He's he's a little dazed. He's in the harvest days. It's all good. I'm sweating. Because I was just in fear of my life. So I think I said earlier, my grandpa was reminding me many times that there was a well in this field. The, uh, the well we don't use. I kept telling him over and over, like, yeah, no, I, I know where the well's at. I got it marked, I know where it's at. And uh, I come up to this well on this pass. I came up to the well and I stopped and I got on the radio and said, uh, I was like, I guess I hit this well. And grandpa, I mean, instantaneously, he was on the mic. He didn't say anything, but he like held the button and then let go. And I got too scared to hear what he had to say. I got on it's a joke, but I guarantee you, he's still just pissed at me. He likes humor, but I'm sure he didn't appreciate what I just did. I can't imagine it made him too happy. I don't think he was very impressed. Oh, goodness. Yeah, see, here's that old well. It needs to be trimmed around. And yeah, there's the T-post I picked up this spring. I was out putting liquid down here. That was fun. I This is a fun field to put down liquid in. Like, it's actually such a blast. It's a lot of fun. 
if I had to pick a favorite job on the farm, it would probably be putting down liquid in the springtime. Um, or planting. I love planting. I love tillage. Uh, but then again, I'm just saying all the things that I haven't done for a while. Everything gets, gets, you get sick of it after a while. But I do, I love running the combine. I really do. But I just, the combine involves a lot more stress for me. Uh, I'm more tensed up. I'm on edge more when I'm running the combine. Whereas if I'm planning, you know, that's, that's simple, you know? Yeah, you might fight with it a little bit the first couple times you go out, but then you sort of get it where it's supposed to be, and you're running. You're a running. Yeah. No, we, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. If, it, if what could happen does happen, I'm going to be really excited to share it with you guys. Uh, that's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. It'll be within the next week or so. Guess what we're still doing? Oh, picking corn? Yeah. That's us. That's me. Ah, here. This is the Combine BTO page. Let's just swipe on over. My totals. We got 18 acres left on Richer Family Farms Harvest 2022. That's pretty badass. It's my last time on the year running the combine, so. And me and the hired guy just had a conversation about nine minutes long about, uh, there's this coyote roaming in this field we're in today. Um, I filmed it, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I did. Uh, it's in this video. But that same coyote was on the end rows where he was at. So, I'm gonna come back out here tonight with my AR and maybe do some population uh, population control and uh, I'll go out in my razor too so if he thinks he can get away I'm going to put 924 turbocharged cc's to work D-O-H-C dual overhead cam honestly I never thought I'd say it but it's either time to really deep clean this hat or retire it I think I want to try the deep clean first though, because I love it so much. Alright, Grandpa, my magic wand is coming out. I've gained a passenger. A small passenger. Bubba. What do you think? Is it cool? Is it better than the last time we rode in the combine together? More fun? Also, what I've realized, this video is 35 minutes long. I'm sorry. Well, after a brief intermission of me having to exchange the child, we are, we are down to, oh, how many acres left? Eight acres left of Harvest 22. I never thought we'd get here. Last pass of Harvest 22. Let's go, baby. It was a grind. I'm sorry about such a long video. I hope you guys found it enjoyable. Uh, I've watched it back now, or at least most of it. I'm filming the last part of it now, but um, I don't know. I thought I was. I thought it was informative. I thought it was. I, you know, I wasn't boring myself. So that's probably a good thing. But yeah, man. man, it was it was a grind this year. Honestly, it really wasn't. We had a great year. We were very fortunate. Minimal breakdowns. Uh, obviously weather cooperated because we haven't gotten any rain hardly this year uh, at least not after spring and early summer so we haven't gotten any moisture so we can just run look at how cool that is come on dude that is awesome so yeah this pump let's go baby what a W what a W feels so good all right, I'm full. Grandpa, let's go. It would only be fitting that I'm full and waiting on Grandpa's grain cart for the last unload of harvest. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'll make another video at some point soon when I get the VT or something. I'll see you guys next time.